All right, let's do it. So sometimes people ask me, how come you don't show the different, when you do a swatch of color and you get new paint and you swatch it out, how come you don't do the, you know, test it on the hot press, the cold press, the rough paper, you don't try it with the gauze, the salt, whatever else you can find in the kitchen. So today, you want to get crazy, we'll get crazy. Let's get into it. All right, so what I'm gonna use today is the Blue Appetite Genuine from Daniel Smith. Everybody loves that color. It's a wonderful color. And what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna take this out here. Don't worry, I'll zoom into all the different spots. But I'm gonna take it here and just lay out some color here. Let me get a nice swatch up here and just kind of run it out a little bit. People like to see that, right? You all like to see that. That's wonderful. Now. I'm going to do something that I learned now, and I'm going to do this with every paint that I ever touch from now on. So I'm going to put down some water. That's what I'm going to do. We're just going to do a little wet into wet and see how that disperses a little bit. Everyone loves to see that. Does it, does it do anything? Does it run? Does it spread? Does it separate? Does it do anything? It really shouldn't separate much. There's a lot of granulation in it. It is a granulating color, which is why I picked it. I didn't want to do this with a non-granulating color. You can see it's spreading a little bit. It looks pretty already. That is wonderful. Now, normally, I stop there. I don't need much more to tell me I like the color. It looks good in the, the heavier mass tone. You water it out a little bit. You dilute it. It still looks good. This is Fabriano Artistico paper, by the way. This is the 100% um, the cotton. It's cold pressed, but... It don't I'm not doing all the papers we're not doing that so we're just doing this and I'm gonna see how this works out so far and I like it I like the way that it spreads everything looks nice okay now here's where we get out of my comfort zone what I'm gonna do right here I'm gonna put a little bit of color here and I'll put some color down here a wonderful color I'm gonna make it a little bit longer a little bit more concentrated a little bit longer so I can add some stuff to it. So I want to make sure now that I add a little bit of salt. So I've got a salt shaker here. I'm going to put some salt on it. There we go. Now some of you might get a little bit, you don't like that. That's not good either. So I've got this Himalayan pink salt. Maybe you like that. I don't know. I don't usually watercolor in my kitchen, but in case I want to, so I'll put some of that on there. How about that? That looks pretty good. I'm just going to try and keep it off this other area here. That's wonderful. Let's see what happens here. It's a coarser salt, so it's bigger granules. It's also Himalayan pink salt, so it's supposed to be magic or some crap like that. We're going to see how magic the salt is on the painting. I don't know why anyone would stop at that point, so let me put down some more color here. You all wanted to do this. I don't know. This is just, this is not usually the way that I do things. But if this is how you do it, then that's what you do it. If that's how you want it, we'll try it. I'm okay with that. Just in case you want to see what pepper does to watercolor, we can do some of that there. Uh, I've got, uh, I've got some, well, let me see if I can get here. Okay, I've got some parsley flakes on here we'll put some parsley flakes on the watercolor see how that handles it I've got some everything but the bagel seasoning so this has sugar and no no sugar this has salt and poppy seeds and salt and all sorts of stuff in it good stuff I don't know why you all like to eat your watercolor but that's fine I listen I'm not judging you at all we're gonna do some more testing here I've got here some, this is just some regular Italian seasoning. In case you're not trying to get fancy, it's just a, just something very simple. You want to get a little bit more deluxe. You get into the deluxe area. This is the super sophisticated stuff here. We got some chocolate syrup. Let's see how that works out with the watercolor. Look, this is not me. You all do this crap, not me. I don't do any of this. This is what I do. This is what everybody else does. Let's do what everybody does. I don't walk around with a first aid kit, so I have no gauze here, but I do have a cotton ball. So maybe we can put 
a cotton ball there and I don't know exactly how to do it should I put the paint down and then the cotton on top I don't know how you do it really but let's just say this one I'm just gonna take some watercolor and just kind of drip it on the cotton ball and see if it what it does to the paper under it I don't know is that how you're supposed to do it are you supposed to put the well you know what I have multiple pieces why don't I just try multiple things here so let's put some paint down here and then put the cotton ball on top of it and see what that does I've got a band-aid we can try a band-aid here Just give me a second to unwrap it here because it's it, there's a lot of pieces to a band-aid you know there's like 10 pieces to it if you're bleeding to death and you need to use a band-aid you're dead you just you have to peel all the stuff off and let's put some band-aid down here see if we can get a little bit more down here I'm running out of water well that's it's it's phobic it's 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 water watercolor phobic it rejects the water, so I don't think it's going to do anything. It's like a masking tape, I think. We'll, we'll see how that turns out. All right, what else do I have here? I have a Biore Charcoal Deep Cleansing Pore Strip. In case you're walking around a stream and you have one of these in your pocket for some reason. All right, this is very specific. I'm supposed to put the watercolor under and on top of it. So let me, let me I don't want to get this into my watercolor. So let me get rid of some of this here. And I'm going to put another big swatch here. That's what I'm going to do here. And we'll put, I'll put the Biore strip. You have to wet the area first according to the directions. And then we're going to put that, we're going to stick it. Oh, it's okay. So we're going to stick it on top. And then we're going to also add a little bit of watercolor to the surface of it and see. Maybe that bleeds through. I don't know. I don't know what it's supposed to do when you wet the top of them, but it says to wet the area and then wet the, on top of it so that's what I'm doing we're not done yet I don't know what this stuff is but I think that's supposed to be the fake grass that you put in the bottom of an Easter basket or something I, I, I don't think I don't know how it's supposed to work I'm gonna drip it on top I guess as well and see how that works I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it or if you're supposed to wet it first and then put it down I don't know I, I'm not I'm not this is not my my area of expertise so I'm not sure how you're supposed to do this you'll have to ask some other youtuber who does this kind of thing I have a couple more spots left let's see what else I have here uh, I have a piece of this is a piece of shirt I'm gonna tear this a little bit smaller well that's a little bit too small I don't want to do that All right so this is my wife's shirt don't tell her I need some thanks on this video. You do the super thanks thing so I can replace my wife's shirt. Don't tell her I did this. I cut up her shirt. It's okay. This is not phobic. You can wash it. It gets wet. I know it does. Well, it looks like it might take a second to soak in. So let me let that soak into the shirt a little bit and see what that does. We'll see how it ends up. Okay, I have... I have a piece of carpet just in case during the day your day job is a carpet layer and you also watercolor I don't know why we wouldn't try that right so maybe I can let's see how that works I'll try and get that water to go down through it saturate it a little bit and then we'll see how that works let's see if I can work it in there a little bit there we go that's beautiful there might be some dog hair on it that's okay you never know when you want to add some dog hair to your watercolor I guess we're doing that now too that's why not right all right now just in case you run back to the kitchen for any reason and you grab a snack these are Cool Ranch Doritos I don't know why you wouldn't try that I've got a little spot right here I'm gonna try that with right there we'll wet it a little bit I'll put some watercolor down maybe do a little bit of wet into wet make it a little bit more watery because of the chips you know they got some natural salt in them so this might be a, a great thing here and we'll just see what happens oh look at that it starts reacting immediately it's beautiful there's a lot whatever that cool ranch is it's nice all right so I'm gonna let all this dry and then we'll come back and see how it looks all right, so let's start with the gradient. That looks very nice. It looks very smooth. 
I like the mask tone. It kind of spreads out nice and evenly. There wasn't like a hard spot where all of a sudden there was color and then there wasn't. There's a, you can see a little bit here where it kind of lightened up a lot compared to the, the spot behind it. But it could have been me because I went back into it and I'm, I'm a moron like that. So I get that. Don't worry about that. The wet and to wet was great. I think that it, it spread very nicely and was a pleasure to work with and I would use it like that again. The Cool Ranch was a little different. The Cool Ranch, um, it, some things got stuck and kind of melted in place, which is weird. So if you want some heavy spots and you want, you can use Cool Ranch Doritos. That's what this is here. Uh, if you're ever in a kitchen and you want to pull out some salt, the salt here, it looks uh, very interesting. It didn't suck up as much water as I thought. You can see little speckle, almost looks like a gravel road. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, the, the magic salt didn't wasn't very magic. It just did a little bit of extra, I guess, because there were bigger pieces. So you, it looks like you have bigger gravel in the gravel road. The uh, the everything but the bagel, I couldn't get all of the poppy seeds or the sesame seeds off and there's some garlic in there. But uh, other than that, it didn't really do much to the texture. You could see a couple little spots there. The parsley didn't really do a whole lot. It was more the pepper that kind of spread over. The parsley kind of rubbed right off. The, the pepper kind of gave it a little bit. There's still some pepper stuck in there. I can't get that off. That's, that's all right. The chocolate syrup was the worst disaster because it dripped down the side of the pad. And now I have a block of paper with chocolate down the side of it. So that is definitely a bad idea. If you want to ruin your, your paper, then go ahead and use the chocolate syrup. I, I don't have a problem with that. The Italian seasoning, again, just a couple little spots. Didn't really do a whole lot of difference. You can see where the chocolate was. The brown kind of mixed with the blue and made a little bit of a darker shade, almost like a black or a dark gray. So that's ex to be expected. The cotton, now these are reversed. I wrote them wrong. Good. That's what I do. But the, the cotton on top, and that's a little thing that splattered. That was not dry yet. So it didn't matter. Don't worry about that. But the cotton that I put the the cotton on the bottom and I dripped it on top, it made it kind of different. It was it soaked up around the edge a little bit, but then it kind of made a little pattern in there. It's not bad. And you put the cotton on the on the bottom. No, you put the cotton on the top of it. It's hard to peel off. It doesn't really all come off that well. And uh, even dry, it just kind of sticks there. It did take up some of the paint, though, so that's good. The Band-Aid is basically like masking fluid. It's it's completely phobic, meaning that it does not, the water runs off of it. That's what the phobic means there. Phobic just means water runs off of it. Okay, then you have the Biore nose strip. Couldn't get it off. I started to rip the paper right and it was just coming off i didn't want to go down to the next sheet i didn't want to i mean that's that's thin right there i don't know if you can see that but that's pretty thin right there so i'm not going to pull the rest of this off but this is i would not do that i i think i think this is best for your nose but maybe if you want to do something else and you want to put that on there and leave it on there you can use it as like a collage or something it's like hard on there i mean it's like a rock it's stiff it's and it's tearing the paper i don't want to do that so that's all right there. The Easter basket grass was interesting. It created almost like a, um, th there's some, there's some beaded up color and, and I think the pigment kind of beaded up in there and then spread out in other areas. So it looks very interesting. And I think it actually bled green into it. So I think you see a little bit of green in those darker spots because the Easter basket grass was not meant to be dipped in water, so it bleeds a little bit when you when you dip it in there. So, the uh, the the cotton shirt acted as expected. It went straight through onto the paper. I, I love this color because it does granulate so very nicely. So there you can see a lot more granulation coming out there because it was just sitting in a puddle for a while. The carpet did not really. It was good stuff. That was a good piece of carpet. Um, I have to replace the carpet in my living room now, but don't worry about that. I just, it, it, it's in a corner. No one will see it. So they, it, but it's, it obviously works very well. I soaked it after it was done. I went to lift it up. There was nothing there. I soaked it again 
and it just and I was pushing it down just trying to get something on the page and, and that's all that happened so there you go you wanted it I gave it to you there's all the different ways you can use this color if there's anything I didn't mix it with other colors I didn't put it on other types of paper but I did the best that I could this time hopefully people will be happy with that so so thumb up the video if you next time you go out painting somewhere in the park or something you're going to carry a backpack from your kitchen put all this crap in it that you would normally cook with now you know I didn't use any olive oil or anything like that maybe you want to try that that maybe that spray oil that you coat the pan so nothing sticks that anti spray stuff I didn't put any butter down here maybe you want to try some of the, the fatty stuff I stayed away from the fatty stuff I used the sugary stuff and the savory stuff but you can put some fats in here and see how that reacts and see if you want to do it I don't know why people do this I don't know why they put stuff in their watercolor is watercolor I think the only thing you're supposed to put in it is watercolor but if you want to experiment then I am not judging you. You do whatever you want to do. Just don't expect me to ever do this again. I'm never going to do this. When I show you paint, I'm going to show you the regular gradient. That's fine. And maybe a wet into wet. I like that too. But all this other stuff is not for me. So there's other people on YouTube that do that. You can go look at their channel. All right, you know what to do. If you would like to join our community, go to illustrationsbypete.com. You can come in, you can put your own artwork on the site and promote it. You can find some inspiration in the free reference photos. You can just use them however you want in your artwork. You do not need to credit me. Or you can come into the forums and talk to some people and maybe give some advice and maybe find a little bit of information that helps you. So come check us out. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one.